Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I quit fast fashion, I quit buying fast fashion for a year and this is what I learned. Today I wanted to share with you probably 10 main points, 10 main things that I learned um, throughout the year that I decided to quit buying fast fashion, why I did it, um, and also how I feel about fast fashion and how I feel about spending money on fast fashion now. And that actually may really surprise you. This portion of today's video is so kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa and I have worked with Ana Luisa throughout this year and right now currently they have their holiday sale going on which is buy one get one 60% off. They have some really beautiful pieces especially for your holiday parties, Christmas parties, New Year's Eve. Like I don't know if you can see the dangliness that's happening in my ears. They release really trendy fashionable pieces that are also really sustainable, high quality, ethically made. These are all 14 karat gold on sterling silver and the quality is absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if Annalise is gonna like me saying this, not at all recommending, but these bracelets, like I'm obsessed with just wearing these really delicate bracelets. And for the past two weeks, I have just been showering, living in them, sleeping in them and like they still look amazing. The quality is phenomenal. Me personally, I know like this time of the year is a real like sparkly time of the year. Um, myself, I don't really like to go full on on the sparkles, like just on me personally. And that's why I really love just these really delicate sparkles. Like I've got a bit of sparkle on my bracelet. I've got a little bit of sparkle on my ears. I've got a little bit of sparkle on my dangly bits, but it's not like full on, you know? If you're interested in picking up some really beautiful jewelry but you don't wanna break the bank and like be spending top dollar, Anna Luisa does really affordable pieces that are also really, really high quality. If you're someone like me who went a year without buying fast fashion, you don't have to feel guilty about spending with Anna Luisa because they do have a conscience, they are an ethical company, so I just really love their pieces. And if you're interested, I'm gonna have a link down below for buy one, get one 60% off. If you wanna deck out for December, I'll have those links down below. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this portion of the video, and thank you to you for allowing me opportunities like this. A little bit of a backstory of why I stopped buying fast fashion and why I stopped purchasing, spending, even really going into fast fashion stores. It kind of just happened organically. I noticed the more that I was Feeling my wardrobe, I noticed the more that I was buying and the more that I kind of looked at the curation and the wardrobe that I had created, it was kind of really starting to become more designer and high-end pieces and the fast fashion was really starting to fade out. So it wasn't really a conscious decision. And then kind of when I realized and I looked at my life and I realized how little fast fashion I was buying, um, last year, it kind of just made sense for myself to just give myself a little bit of a challenge. It wasn't going to be like a hard challenge because at that point I really wasn't buying that much fast fashion so it just felt like something that I wanted to try to see if I could do. I'm aware, I'm conscious and I understand the implications of fast fashion. I understand it's a very dark and, and dirty industry and it's just something that I thought, look, you know, this might not be that hard for me, so let's give it a go. Turns out it can be a little bit harder than you, you can imagine. I did slip up once or twice and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So lesson number one, I think what I learned throughout this process and probably just this general part of my life that I'm at is I would much rather now support businesses with a conscience, with ethical practices in place that aren't just all about making money and also want to create beautiful items, beautiful pieces, but also do it ethically and as ethically as they can. So I'm always gonna prefer to support businesses, whether they be large or small, that just have a passion for what they do, but also have a passion for not f***ing up the world as they do it. And that's part of the reason why I like Anna Luisa so much and all of the other brands that I've discovered throughout the year. So number two, this one may be a little bit controversial and this is a lesson that I kind of learned more towards the end of the year. And that is, fast fashion really isn't as bad as I thought. Now look, hear me out. Not everyone loves fashion, okay? Not everyone loves shopping as much as me. And of course, not everyone has the budget to, to shop and spend and put that much money towards their wardrobe as you, know, you or I may. I think for me, where fast fashion is bad is where it is done and it's spent and it is bought irresponsibly. So if you're out here, you know, like just buying fast fashion on a weekly basis, like throwing hundreds of dollars at fast fashion and then like throwing the pieces out, never wearing them again, never wanting to be an outfit repeater. I think that can be a little bit excessive, but if you watch my What I Wore in a Week on Vacation video, I shared a top and I, I realized I have a few pieces like this in my wardrobe. I think I bought it from ASOS. 
literally when I was like 21, 22, okay, I'm 28 now and I still have that top. It's a fast fashion top. It's just a white, simple blouse. And I've had that top for years and it still is in fantastic condition. And I think that if you're buying fast fashion with the intention of just like wearing it once and throwing it away, it's not something that I want to do. I think if you are buying fast fashion with the intention of wearing it and loving it to death, then I think it's a better option. And not everyone loves fashion as much as us, okay? Like not everyone loves it. I know people who buy fast fashion, but they literally buy like three tops a year, two tops a year. So, I mean, I'm not gonna expect them to want to spend $900 on a, a coat because they like don't really like fashion and they've had the same coat for like 10 years and it's from, you know, Kmart or Big W or Target and it treats them well and they love it and they get the wear out of it and it's all they want. Like, I think I've learned to become a little bit less judgmental of other people and their choices. So, yay. <laughs> Number three. I'm still a little bit of a, I mean, is this snobbery? I don't know. Experiences are just really important to me. And throughout my year of not spending and not buying fast fashion, what I've learned is the Insta experience is just like really important to me. And I think part of the reason why I don't really like shopping like at a lot of the mainstream fast fashion stores is just because the Insta experience just, it doesn't feel nice. Like for me, it doesn't feel nice. I'm all about like the presentation and the layout. Are the clothes like organized nicely from like size order? Or do I have to go like rummaging through, you know, digging to the back of the rack to look for my size? You know, are they all like tightly packed like sardines um, on this rack or is it like, airy and breezy and like the clothes are breathing on the rack and they're not like <laughs> sucked into each other like a you know 5 p.m london you know train ride that was reaffirmed to me when i went to the gold coast recently and i went to pacific fair and i went in a few major retailers and i was like oh no like this just i'm getting a bit of anxiety i just feel over i wouldn't say anxiety it's very a bit dramatic um I would, it just gets a bit overwhelming for me. Like, I don't know where to look like. There's just too many clothes. Like, I just get way too overwhelmed. And I'm like, I don't know. Where, where do I go? Like, where do I, And I get a bit for decision fatigue because there's just, like, way too many options. And, like, the people. And it's just, it's a lot. And that's why I think I still just, like, don't really like that in-store experience. But let me know how you feel. Like, do you, like, thrive off of that? Um, for me, personally, it's, like, a little bit off-putting. So the fourth thing I learned is that at the end of the day... I'm probably still going to choose the designer item, the high quality, high street, you know, more known label, more high quality, quality made piece over the fast fashion piece, like seven out of 10 times. I still think just like down, down to my core, I think I'm just forever going to be more attracted to quality, um, you know, beautiful labels, the story number five this one let me know if you have any recommendations let me know how you feel about this and i'm not trying to offend anyone but i feel that i mean anna louisa i feel very differently about but what i think i realized was when i'm trying to buy ethically made ethically sourced probably more clothing like i don't feel like this about anna louisa there's particular brands though Especially like I found a lot of Australian brands that are ethically made, ethically sourced. A lot of them are like a particular style. And again, don't feel like this about Victorian Woods either. But like, I don't really want to look like, like puffy palazzo pants with like, you know, tie dye on them and like a singlet. Like that's not really my vibe. And like some of the patterns I feel like a lot of ethically sourced you know, vegan, conscious brands use are just not like patterns that I like. I found it really tricky to find fashionable, trendy, really like high fashion looking. Like I want to look, like I want to look fashionable. I found it really tricky to find things that I thought looked stylish for what I find to be stylish and beautiful. So if you have any other recommendations for ethically made clothing, you know, ethical clothing brands, please leave them down below. If you have any other Australian brands as well, please leave them down below because I found it really difficult. Now, number six, coming up to my point where I found that I did slip up from time to time, but again, I slipped up because 
it didn't even cross my mind that they were really fast fashion because I fell in love with them and I just thought they were amazing. I was gonna get so much wear out of them. And I think for me, what I've learned is there's just certain things that I would really just not rather not like buy designer. I found that I was in need of a little bit more workout gear. I didn't have that many pieces. And it's not like I didn't try. There was a lot of brands that made ethically sourced workout wear that I was like, mm, I need like, okay, I need, and you know, either the color was off or the material was off or the pattern was off. Um, and you know, I did try to go down the designer workout wear route and I got that home. I didn't even show you that. That was a whole, a huge haul that I did of just like all this designer workout wear. I was hoping that I would find some really good quality, ethically made, like not like fat, fast fashion workout wear. But honestly, it was just all trash. And I was like, I can't, I didn't even want to come in here and show you it. Cause I was like, this looks like crap. I'm not going to spend $400 for a white workout wear shirt. No. Just no. Like right now, as an example, this is my, these are my leggings. I absolutely love these. I'm wearing them right now. I wear them all the time. These are my butter butter. I'm pretty sure this is probably considered fast fashion, but I love them. They feel so good quality. And oh, I just, I really see myself getting the wear out of these for years and years and years to come. So I think in those situations, I personally feel okay doing that. Okay, lesson number seven, the thing that I learned, balance is key. And what I've come to learn and how I feel now is that the balance is really important to me. I I don't want, you know, a, a wardrobe full of really, really expensive high-end items, designer items. But I also don't want a wardrobe full of just fast fashion, cheaply made, poorly made things that are going to break in five minutes. I think that there's a really good balance that you can find where... And even, even in your dressing, you know, I personally now don't really like to dress head and toe in designer, especially head to toe, like noticeable logos. I think the magic is where it's a bit of a balance and you can mix high and low and you can, you know, spend and, and invest in the real quality pieces, like maybe your outerwear or, you know, depending on where you live, the items that you're really going to get the wear out of and you're really going to love and they're going to be the workhorses and the staples in your wardrobe. And also mixing in some, some trendy things or maybe some just fun pieces that you don't maybe want to spend $3,000 on and you'll go ahead and maybe get the more affordable version. I think a really beautiful mixture and combination of spending is healthy and probably a little bit more of a balanced approach that will probably in the long run leave you looking and feeling a lot more stylish, a lot more fashionable. Lesson number eight, sometimes designer is not always the best option. Going back to my last point, sometimes it's just not appropriate or for me anyway, like I'm, I don't personally feel comfortable with a wardrobe full of designer because as much as I love these pieces, I still care and I still get a bit upset or annoyed if there's something I really love and it gets damaged. There's just certain situations that I find myself in anyway, certain occasions I find myself in that are gonna maybe get a little bit messy, okay? A little bit dirty, okay? Christina Aguilera, dirty, okay? Sometimes red wine is spilt, food is spilt, drinks are spilt, and sometimes, okay, people can get a bit rowdy. And I think what I've come to learn is there's just certain occasions, maybe you go to a festival, a concert, and maybe you don't want to carry your beautiful bag to a mosh pit, you know what I mean? I posted a look on my Instagram a few weeks ago of a Norma Kamali dress and these shoes, and I had so many people ask me about these shoes. What I never even shared with you guys, I don't even really want to tell people what the brand of the shoes are because like, I was just, I was disgusted. I'm gonna take it to my shoe guy and see if he can fix it. Okay, look, one wrong move, guys. Oh my god, where's the, oh my god, I've lost. Look, one wrong move, okay? This ties up the leg. In the, in, in the event of literally, it took two steps, okay? One step was the tie up the ankle had slipped down. Next minute, I've stepped on the leather part with my other foot and the whole leather part has just completely come off. And completely removed. These are Tamara Melon. Melon? Mil Melon? Okay, look, not Gucci price, not like, you know, not, not Louis Vuitton expensive, but these are, these are expensive, okay? These are kind of considered like a, a, a label, a, a designer shoe, if you will. And like, look at that, okay? Look at that! Did me dirty, damn it, Tamara, you did me dirty. And, you know, goes back to my point of sometimes designer is not always the best way, and you may be surprised that you may spend less and get better quality than you do when you spend more. Sometimes. Exhibit A. So number nine. Some of you guys might feel like this is a bit of a cop out, but some of you may be able to relate to me. So let me know how you feel and be honest. Uh, I don't know how to say this, so I'm just gonna say it. I got so tired of like, I, I don't know if it's just my personality type, but 
I can find myself in a deep dark hole if I if I Google and I you know I, I educate myself and I believe education is important I believe it's important to stay informed but there's a certain line that I can cross where I can go overboard and I do this all the time and I can become very aware of certain things whether it be fast fashion unethical clothing practices beauty like makeup and cruelty oh my god like my diet you know like cruelty to animals and um, climate change like I can just find myself in a very a very dark place if I go too far into that and I try to do like all of these things you know like I try to be a vegan and I try to dress sustainably and I try to like cut out and everything that has anything to do with animal cruelty and anything to do with um, you know human slavery basically and I know it may sound like a bit of a cop-out but like truly it is the best way like staying completely informed and having a very in-depth knowledge about a lot of the effed up issues in this world is the perfect way for my brain to just completely be like hello mental illness like to me it is it is literally mental illness within my mind waiting to happen like I, I can't I can't cope with that I applaud people that that spend the time and dedicate their lives to making the world a better place and deal with these up things on a daily basis and advocate and push and they are at the forefront of these issues learning more and and reading and viewing more of these things that happen in our world and they it just lights them up inside even more and it pushes them and it motivates them for me i feel like it has the complete opposite effect where i just like want to bury myself in a hole and have such a pessimistic view of the world and it just leads me to feel so dark and empty and like what is the point of life <laughs> um I, I don't know does anybody else feel like that like I feel like I can't do everything and maybe selfishly as well I've realized I don't want to do everything because living that way as well doesn't make me happy and I know it may sound a little bit ignorant and I don't at all want to be ignorant but I also don't want to be just like constantly living and constantly having these thoughts in my head of just all the up things that take place in our world and that's why again going back to my point about balance like I'd rather try where I can to do what I can but not become overly obsessed with any one witch thing because I feel like that is literally like a recipe for mental illness within my mind waiting to happen and it's happened before and it's happened countless times and Maybe some of you get it, maybe some of you are like, you're just a selfish bitch. Sometimes I dabble between like feeling like that. I, sometimes I feel really guilty for living the way I do and you know, occasionally eating dairy and maybe occasionally eating a little bit of meat and you know, wearing a fast fashion piece or putting concealer on my face that you know, is tested on animals. It's like, yeah, I just think for me, I just, it literally makes my brain want to explode if I think about it all too much. It's just, it's very overwhelming. And I don't know if that's going to get any better the older I get. But at this age, I find it very overwhelming. And maybe I'm just not meant to be one of those absolute walking saints living on planet Earth that are just the most incredible human beings and dedicate their whole life to these causes. Maybe I just need to accept the fact that that's not me, okay? Maybe I just need to accept the fact that that's not in me. It's a bit of a long rant, but let me know if you can relate to that because it's something that like literally is an internal battle that I live within my mind quite often. So number 10, the last point that I'm the last lesson, the last thing that I want to touch on follows on from point number nine. And that is that, again, it's just this constant polarity of, I love shopping and I love clothes and I love things, but I also sometimes feel this guilt. And I also love, like love, I get off. <laughs> on helping other people with their shopping choices. And like, I get off on going shopping with women in my life who I love, whether it be family or friends, and they want a bit of styling advice, they want a bit of help finding some really great pieces. And maybe they're not like crazy obsessed and they don't have the budget and they just want to spend at more affordable locations. I get off on helping people find beautiful things and and they, when they try it on and like, you know, bringing things to their change room and I get off on that and I find it a really great way to bond and I feel more connected when I, when I get to do things like that with them and they feel good and I, I see them feel good and it, it makes me feel good. And I found myself this year 
turning down opportunities like that, turning down those bonding moments and those moments that I would really enjoy spending with my friends and my family because they needed clothes, they needed a winter wardrobe, they needed some clothes, they needed some things. And I was like, oh, like I, I don't want to go into these stores. I feel guilty being in these stores. I don't want to be tempted by anything. I don't want to be one of those people that are like, oh, no, like, you shouldn't be shopping there. There's a fine line between like, you know, when you educate yourself and you become aware of something and you get a bit like, ugh, I'm passionate and you should also do this. But then also like, you don't want to just say nothing. And I thought that's sort of a delicate balance. And I found myself turning down these moments and turning down these shopping trips and these days out with, you know, my family or my friends because I, I felt bad and I felt guilty. And I'm trying not to do that anymore because maybe what I've realized is that is not as important on my hierarchy as my relationships with the people I care about and bonding with the people I care about and the love that I feel for those people. So that is my roundup. That is all the lessons that I've learned. Thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. And again, if you're interested in supporting and shopping with an ethical, um, quality made jewelry brand, check out Anna Luisa for buy one and get one 60% off. I really hope that you found today's video interesting and I would love to hear what you think of today's video and the lessons that I shared. And if you kind of can relate to any of them, I'd really love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. I'm really excited to read your comments and hear from you in the comments down below. I'm gonna have another one linked to you right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.